So I finished my southbound Appalachian Trail through hike about a month ago, and I wanted to make a video detailing everything that was in my pack when I finished. So a, kind of a final uh, gear review. Um, this is going to be very different than all the gear that I started with. And if you want to see that, I have other videos on what I started with. Um, I started southbound in July, so I pretty much started with a full summer uh, kit. And when I finished in November, I had temps that got down to 10, 15 degrees on some nights. So I was cold weather winter uh, hiking towards the end. Um, so I'm going to go over every single thing in detail. Uh, these videos can get long because I'm going to give reviews on things and say if I'd take them again or if I'd recommend them to other people. Um, if you don't have time to that and you don't want to listen to me, just go, but you are interested in the equipment, uh, go in the description and click the lighter pack link and you can see um, every single piece of gear uh, that I am going to go through in this video. You'll see the weight of the item in case you want to know that. And for the things that I purchased, you'll see links uh, directly to them so you can check out the price. Um, all right, so with that, uh, let's start with the packs because I made a huge change about halfway through and where I did change a lot of my gear was around Harper's Ferry. Again, I was going south, um, so around halfway through. Um, I started with this uh, frameless pack. This is a Mountain Lore Designs Burn and it's a 38 liter. Um, great pack, but when it started getting colder and I needed more volume, um, to carry more clothes and uh, uh, just pack out more food when I wanted to. Um, the 38 liters just wasn't enough for volume. Um, when I started with an, I started with an eight pound base weight. This thing was fine and you could carry three days of food plus your eight pound base weight and this thing was great. Um, and this pack only weighs a pound. So yeah, good frameless, good frameless pack if that's what you're into. Um, but then I switched to this Granite Gear Crown 260, um, which is a framed pack. So it does have an uh, internal frame. Um, the frame is removable too. So this is a really flexible pack um, in the ways that you can modify it. Uh, the hip belt um, completely comes out if you don't want to use a hip belt. Uh, it also adjusts, so you'll lose weight on a through hike, I lost around 15, maybe 20 pounds max. I don't think I've lost 20, maybe 15. Um, but I did have to adjust the, the hip belt. So you can actually adjust this thing and that was great. Um, it has huge side pockets. You can fit two water bottles in one side if you want. You could probably put a tent in the other. Um, and it has this huge stretchy mesh in the front where you could just store all types of stuff. I would put a sit pad. Um, in there and probably like toilet paper and I don't know, things that I would want readily available. 60 liters is a lot um, for a through hike pack. Uh, I don't think I ever came close to using a full, the full capacity. Uh, I'd say somewhere around 48, um, 48 to 50 liters is probably a perfect size for a through hike pack if I were to get another one. Um, and this pack also comes with a top that you can put on uh, or you could just leave it at home if you don't want the weight. I did carry it because I liked having the extra pocket on the top. Um, so that was the pack. Uh, would I take it again? Yeah, this thing carried weight really well. I'd say it having this pack with a base weight of 14 pounds at times felt lighter than carrying this pack with a base, rate, base weight around 8 um, so yeah, lightweight internal frame packs I think are a good uh, good way to go. Um, I also carry this fanny pack with me which I made uh, with the sewing machine and I'll put a, a link to how I learned to make this pack. I'm not an expert sewer but I can follow YouTube videos. Um, and yeah, just having like something right in front of you was... I, 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 I feel like you need it. Like you need somewhere to put your phone, you need somewhere to put a few snacks somewhere to put headphones. Uh, you don't want to be going in and out of your pack all the time. So having a fanny pack or having a pack with front pockets, I think is the way to go. For me, I had both. Um, and it really, 
I mean, it makes things accessible and it also takes some weight off your back. So I would put some really heavy items in here like power bricks. So they weren't on my back and they were just right there on my waist. Um, so yeah, in terms of packs, that's what I, what I started with and what I ended with. All right, let's talk footwear. So I finished the trail in these trail runners, which are the Topo uh, Terra Venture 3s. And these were an amazing trail runner for me. Um, I love the really wide toe box and uh, the grip on the bottom was amazing. Never had any issue on wet rock or sliding or lack of grip. And probably the biggest asset of these is the durability. Like you want a shoe that isn't gonna fall apart um, after a few hundred miles because these get expensive. So um, I started the trail in Hoka Speed Goats and those things didn't last more than like 300 miles till the sides were completely chewed and I was gluing the bottoms um, and they were too narrow. So I switched to these and I never had any issues with durability. The only thing was this flap here would come undone like pretty quick but it never moved past like it never got any worse than what you're seeing right here and this shoe has over 500 miles on it so yeah i'd say durability these things are great comfort my hoka speed goats were definitely more cushy um, but in terms of like getting your money's worth i went through three pairs of these for the uh the whole trip plus one pair of Hoka Speed Goats that I cashed in around 400 miles. So I was getting consistently over 500 miles per pair of these, which is stretching it. But, um, but yeah, Topo Terra Venture 3s. Um, for my camp shoes, I just wore these foam slides that I bought off Amazon, and these are a great idea. Uh, for a through hike, I wore these every single day and I would totally recommend them. They weigh uh, right around four ounces uh, for the pair. And yeah, you want a camp shoe. I was debating whether to bring one or not and you want a camp shoe and preferably something that you can also use in hostels as a shower sandal. So get something that's like foam or plastic. Um, yeah, I think these are hard to beat. The only thing I wish I had for the Northeast where you're gonna be going through some rivers and wading a little bit and fording uh, streams and rivers is something on the back. So if I had to do it again, maybe I would bring like a croc with a back and um, switch to these after I got past the sections where I'm wading through some uh, deeper water because uh, these are pretty useless in that scenario. But around camp, in hostels and in showers, these are great. For my shelter on the AT, I used this one person, uh, Gossamer Gear The One trekking pole tent. Um, I loved this tent and it's probably one of my favorite pieces of gear that I brought with me um, for a few reasons. I have used trekking pole tents before and I love the fact that this one person trekking pole tent uses two trekking poles. And um, I say that because when you use two trekking poles in a one person tent, it gives you so much more headroom and I could fully sit up and I could change, I could stretch. Um, I had a lot of room above my head and I didn't feel like I was in a, a claustrophobic coffin, which some one person tents feel like. Um, I'll put a picture up of what this looks like when it's pitched right. Uh, I didn't have any issues with um, like bad condensation in this thing. Uh, the only thing is that it did start to leak around the foot box and rain and you can see I had to um, seam seal the bottom uh, foot box here. Um, but overall it's a great tent. Uh, you can find it for around $300. I picked this one up for 220 bucks on Reddit ultralight gear trade. So if you're not familiar with that, you can buy and sell ultralight gear and yeah, 220 bucks for a tent that weighs a pound. Um, that's pretty hard to beat. I don't think you need to spend 600 bucks on a shelter, um, especially if you're staying in the AT shelters and not in tents all the time, which I definitely was doing towards the end. So having a tent that just weighed a pound and that was a simple one person tent was, was great. Um, it takes six uh, stakes and I just brought mini groundhogs and those were 
uh, more than fine. Um, for my uh, trekking poles, I had these Cascade Mountain Tech carbon fiber poles. Um, I used these for a full season of hiking before I went on the AT and then hiked the entire AT with them. And they never cracked, um, never broke. I replaced the tips with the carbide, new carbide tips. Um, the handle split a little bit, so I duct taped that. Um, but these are an amazing budget uh, hiking item and I use these every day and I 100% would bring them again. So Cascade Mountain Tech um, carbon fiber uh, trekking poles and you can find them for like under 50 bucks. Um, another good budget item is this uh, ground sheet and I use this the entire AT. Um, this is Polycro. It is, you can find it at Walmart or any other kind of store that sells um, plastic window insulation and I just bought one of those window kits and then cut it to size to fit uh, fit the tent and yeah it's great to have a little barrier underneath your tent especially when you're using ultralight gear so you can protect it but I would also use this thing in shelters underneath my sleeping pad as kind of a barrier from the shelter floor which can sometimes be a little bit gross so polycro um, Polycro ground sheet and yeah, use this the entire trip. All right, let's go over my sleeping setup uh, that I used to finish the trail. Um, the main piece of gear was this UGQ 20 degree bandit quilt. Um, this, the features that I had on this was a fully sewn foot box, um, which is a lighter and warmer option. And definitely if you're getting a 20 degree quilt and you're gonna use it down to 20 degrees, I would definitely get a sewn foot box. Um, the only other feature that I added on here was this dynamic tensioning control, which along the sides is this cord right here. And what you can do is just cinch the sides and you can see how that kind of curls. When you're laying down on your pad, this curls around your body to prevent drafts. So I didn't have to use pad straps, which I was very thankful for because I really don't like using pad straps. I just find them annoying and I'd rather just have something like this that curls around my body. Um, and the dynamic tension control on this quilt was fantastic. So such a great feature. I think it's a really cheap add-on to these quilts too. So um, UGQ Bandit 20 degree quilt, really high quality. This had the, the lighter fabric, the M10 fabric, and all in all, it only weighed like 20 ounces. So really great, uh, great backpacking quilt. And yeah, this, has, this is still in great condition. I'm gonna use this a lot more um, even after the through hike. Um, let's see. So the reason I could probably stretch this 20 degree quilt down to 15 degrees and a little colder is because I added this liner. And the way that these liners work is you kind of wrap your entire body in this thing and then uh, you get into your quilt and it adds, this one is a Sea to Summit Thermalite uh, reactor and this will add around 10 degrees of warmth and it's about eight ounces. Fabric is just this really soft synthetic fabric um, and it goes over your entire body. So you could actually get completely in this thing and cinch this cord around your entire head. And when you have a quilt that doesn't cover your head, something like this is, is really good. And I needed it um, in the Smokies and I got this shipped to me right before the Smokies and I used it every single day on trail after. Um, for pillows, I, I started the trail with just this sponge and this was not enough, um, even though it's ultra light and uh, yeah, I, I don't like inflatables, so I wanted to do just foam. And yeah, it wasn't enough, so I added this um, pillowcase, this uh, Thermarest pillowcase, and I would just stuff all my extra clothes in here, and that made the best pillow um, that I've ever tried backpacking. Um, I don't like inflatables, I just don't, it doesn't feel right to me. I don't get great sleep on inflatables um, for pillows. And uh, yeah, just stuffing this with your clothes makes an awesome pillow. 
and and I would just put this sponge on top of this pillow and it would give me even more comfort. Or if I wanted to sleep on my side and I felt my neck wasn't supported, I could just put this under my neck. Um, so for an ounce, this gave me a lot of flexibility um, and comfort uh, for sleeping. Um, I also just brought this sit pad with me, which I used every single day on trail and I would definitely recommend um, other people bring just some uh, sort of simple sit pad like this. Uh, you're gonna wanna some kind of comfort when you sit down for lunch and I would keep this on the outside of my pack and I would just take it out all the time. Um, you could also put it right outside of your tent uh, as kind of a, a doormat uh, so you're not tracking dirt in and out. Um, and I would also use it if I was gonna cook right next to my tent, if I was making like a hot drink, like hot chocolate or something, um, I would just put it there and then I could put my fuel canister directly on here as kind of a flatter surface. Uh, so just a simple um, sit pad. Um, the only other piece of gear that I don't have here that I used was a Thermarest NeoAir X-Lite and that was my main sleeping uh, pad or mattress. And I don't have it with me because I had to send it back to Thermarest because the valve was leaking. So the, ever since I switched to it around uh, Duncannon, um, it would leak slowly during the night. So about halfway through, I would uh, kind of be sunken down and I would just have to blow it up again and then get back on. So when it was full, it was incredibly comfortable, but the slow leak was really frustrating. I tried to find the leak because I thought it might have been a, a slow like pinhole and I thought I could patch it, but I never found it. I did all those methods like soapy water and put it in a tub to see if there's holes and there never was. So when I got off trail, I mailed it back to Thermarest and they confirmed that it was a bad valve and they're replacing it for free. I just don't have it, they're sending it. So, um, but I did like the mattress. I just didn't like that it leaked um, for what, what that's worth. Um, so that was my full sleeping setup. And again, I used that down to around 15 degrees. All right, so let's go over my water filtration system and accessories like hats, gloves, things like that. Um, for water, I kept things really simple. Two one liter smart water bottles and a Sawyer squeeze. So I don't think you need to overthink this. Um, Sawyer squeeze, easy, simple, uh, will always work. Um, and the one case that it won't work is if this O-ring falls out and it's that white O-ring right there. So I carry two extra in my pack. Um, and the reason that usually the O-ring fails is people twist these things way too hard onto the bottle. So you wanna twist it just so where it's tight enough so that you can squeeze water through it and water doesn't leak from here. Um, but if you start squeezing it too much, that O-ring is gonna fail and then you're not gonna be able to filter. Um, but I used the filter the entire trip, never had any issues, and it's still my main water filter for backpacking. Um, for accessories, I finished the trail with a lot because it started getting super cold. Um, let's see, I'll go through hats first. So I have long hair. I brought a lot of hats to keep, keep my hair out of my face at all times. I started the trail and finished the trail with this, uh, this baseball hat. Having some kind of just like normal baseball hat with you is a great idea for the AT. You get sun out of your eyes and um, yeah, it's just, it's nice to have a hat. Um, so that was the baseball hat that I took with me the whole trip. Probably my favorite hat for colder weather stuff was this smart wool beanie. Um, and this one uh, is just a merino wool beanie, but it's really, really thin and light. And I liked, having that because I wouldn't sweat through it. So I could actually wear this um, and it was comfortable and uh, yeah, it wasn't too hot. So this is a merino wool, uh, smart wool beanie. Um, the other hat that I had was this Carhartt orange uh, knit cap. I think this one's acrylic. Um, this was too hot to actually hike in, but I would wear it in camp. Sometimes I'd sleep with this and I like that it's blaze orange because there's a lot of hike or a lot of hunters out there. and. Uh, yeah, you want something blaze orange. Sometimes I would just strap this to the top of my pack just as a <laughs> like a signal that I was there, don't shoot me. But um, 
yeah, I guess if I had to do it again, I'd get like one of these hats in blaze orange. So I wasn't getting, bringing two. Um, this is a balaclava from Smartwool. And what this does, you can pull it over your entire head and it covers your entire head other than your eyes and your nose. And I would sleep with this in cold weather and this would keep me really, really warm. Um, you could also use it as a neck, uh, neck gaiter and something to just like pull over your mouth um, in colder weather. And especially if you're using a quilt where your head is exposed at night, having a balaclava for cold weather is the way to go. Um, for gloves, let's see, I brought, the main gloves I used were these minus 33 uh, merino wool liners. And I used these pretty much every day for the last few weeks when the temperatures were consistently in the, in the 30s and 40s. Um, they developed some small holes. Yeah, you can see one of the holes in the thumb right there. And I think that was just from using the trekking poles. Uh, they would rub up against the trekking pole. Uh, but for gloves that I think were under 20 bucks that I use every day, these are definitely worth it and the way to go. Thin liner gloves, because when you're hiking, you don't need much. Um, I also brought these rain mitts, which these are from Mountain Laurel Designs, which is the same company as this pack. Uh, these only weigh like an ounce and give you some kind of rain barrier, but the one time I actually needed these to work, they wet out pretty quickly. And yeah, I don't know if, I don't know if they're worth it. <laughs> I think jury's still out on these. Um, but yeah, rain mitts, I guess they could be helpful, but I need to use them. I need to test that piece more. I only used them once. Um, these are outdoor research down mitts, and I also carry these and rarely use them. Um, the one time I needed them was in the Smokies um, when the temps dropped and it, and it snowed. And uh, yeah, when I was in camp, these actually did keep my hands warm. Um, they don't weigh that much and you can just, you know, for me, I used them in my pillow because I had to stuff my pillow. So these are great things to stuff in your pillow. Um, but in terms of use, yeah, I only use these a handful of times. You probably don't need anything as serious as this on the AT. Um, yeah. Oh, one other thing, uh, bandanas and handkerchiefs. Uh, I carry two of these and one of them I would use kind of to tie around my head if I was really hot. Um, but there's a million uses for these. Definitely take one or two. I carry two, uh, one for kind of my hands and head and one for, uh, for cooking. Um, but yeah, those are all my accessories, hats, gloves, and my water system. All right. So time to go over all my clothing that I brought, and this will probably be the longest segment because I finished in cold weather and brought a lot more clothing than what I started with in the summer. Um, I'll start out with the socks. Um, I started my trip um, heading south with just darn tufts and I quickly developed blisters that I never had before because I never through hiked before and uh, yeah I needed these in gingy liner socks. So these are the ones with the individual individual toes and these I mean, these arguably saved my through hike in the beginning. Um, and I picked them up at Shaw's in Maine right after the 100 mile wilderness and immediately stopped getting blisters on my toes. Um, so these 100% will stop blisters on toes if you're uh, getting, they won't prevent blisters in other spots like the back of your heel or the sides. That's more of like a fit problem. Um, with your shoe, but if you're getting blisters with on your toes where they're rubbing up against each other and gingy liners will fix that um, I carry two pairs one I hiked with one as a backup and if you're going on your first through hike It's really not a bad idea to get like just a cheap $10 pair of in gingy liners Just for the first few weeks to see if you get bad blisters and then mail them home if you don't need them uh, The darn tough socks great they they work there's a reason every single person uses them uh, and they even have a sock exchange program and i had a pair that started to develop like not quite a hole but if i wore them for another like few weeks it would have had a hole um, and i exchanged them for this pair in duncannon so you'll find uh, gear outfitters that will do darn tough sock exchange and you can exchange with no questions asked for another pair
Um, and these are the, oh man, I think the, I don't know, I don't remember the name. I'll put it uh, over top of me in the video. Um, but yeah, two pairs of darn tufts. Um, for rain gear, um, I, for my main jacket, I had this Frog Togs, uh, Frog Togs rain jacket. This is an ultralight rain jacket. The fit is super baggy. You look a little bit ridiculous in this thing, I know that. Um, but I like it for a few reasons, and one is it is 100% waterproof. So this is a plastic coating on the outside. It's not going to wet out. Um, yeah, like when you need water, you need protection from the rain, like this thing will not let water in. Um, the downside is that it doesn't breathe well. And um, yeah, it's use case in the summer, not great. Uh, I would just usually hike in the rain without a rain jacket and just get wet because um, you're going to sweat in this thing. Also, it can develop holes. Um, this outside is really, really fragile and my best advice to people who are thinking about using this jacket is to treat it like the most expensive piece of gear in your entire pack and this thing will last. Um, you can see I've like taped that's just one patch job, but this thing has a lot of gear tape all over it, just from little tiny patches. You can see on the back, there's more patches. Um, I don't know. I really like it because it's 100% waterproof. It costs like 20 bucks and it weighs five ounces. Those specs are really hard to beat. Um, and I wasn't going to spend $200 on a rain jacket that could wet out in a rainstorm. Um, that one rainstorm that I had, the one I we'll talk about over and over again, the one in uh, Fontana Dam and Smokies, uh, this thing did not wet out the entire time. So when I actually needed this thing to perform in wet and cold temperatures, it, it did. Um, my rain pants, the Outdoor Research Helium pants, uh, in the same scenario, these things wet out and my legs were completely soaked uh, in freezing rain and cold temperatures when you don't wanna be cold. So. I only use these a few days. I think their use case is pretty limited. Cold, wet, windy, smoky mountains, uh, the whites, uh, Maine. You might want something like this, but are these gonna wet out in a downpour? Yeah, probably. Because <laughs> um, they're not, uh, yeah, they're not made to withstand like hours and hours of rain without wetting out. Like as a wind barrier, and light rain, um, these things are great. But in total downpour, these things wet out. The frog togs did not. Um, for my main hiking shirt, I wore this uh, Outdoor Research Astro Man, uh, and this is a hoodie. And I wore this every day on the trail south from Harper's Ferry. Um, didn't rip, didn't tear. Um, the material is super stretchy and lightweight. Um, if I could start the trail over again, I'd probably bring this as well as a Patagonia Capoline um, short sleeve shirt. Um, those are the two best hiking shirts that I've ever worn. And I did start the trip in a Patagonia long sleeve, which is also a great option. Gives you a lot more sun protection. Um, but yeah, these, those two shirts, Patagonia Capoline and Outdoor Research Astro Man are super lightweight. And yeah, I like this one a little more just because it has that deep, that deep zipper right on the chest and you can just use that to vent all the heat that's coming off your body. Um, so great hiking shirt, love that. Um, the shorts that I wore were the Patagonia Nine Trails and I loved two things about these and didn't like one. The one, the two things I really liked were the zippered pockets. So if you had like chapstick or, I don't know, some, for me it was chapstick that I was always worried about falling out. Um, you could zipper your pockets, has a back zipper too. Also it comes, it had uh, the liner on the inside is a boxer cut, which is so much better than that really thin like bathing suit cut that comes in most shorts. And for me, I would always chafe in shorts that had that bathing suit cut, but the boxer cut for the liner on these is great. Um, the one thing I didn't like was the length. I think these are too long. So if they had like two inches off 
uh, these would have been a better pair of shorts for me. You just, I just wanted less. <laughs> I wanted less material on this. Um, so they're a little bit long, but uh, the other features were great. Um, I did carry another pair of boxers. Um, sometimes I'd sleep in these if uh, I didn't want to wear my hiking shorts to bed. Um, or I'd wear these in hostels, but I really never hiked in them. Um, but it could be good to have just an extra pair of boxers, weighs a few ounces. Um, when it got colder, uh, I did not bring a pair of pants. Um, I just wore the shorts with these uh, base layer bottoms. And these are the Patagonia Capeline um, Midweight. And these, I think, were pretty good. The fit on me wasn't great. So I would have gotten something tighter. And I guess the best advice I can give is get something that's like skin tight, like leggings. Um, having these, if they're not skin tight, you're not getting the most out of the material. So um, I probably could have used the size down on these so they were just really tight on my body. Um, I also don't think you need to spend a lot of money on these, just something, it could be any brand of tights that cling to your body, but the Patagonia ones, these are fine. They worked well. Um, for my base layer top, I used a Smart Wool 150. Uh, I used this more as a sleeping layer. Um, I wore it a couple times hiking when it was really cold, mainly the Smokies. <laughs> I keep talking about that because that was the most extreme temperatures I faced. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a wool layer, so it's not going to um, develop a lot of the same stink that you get in a lot of the other synthetic clothing. Um, the material on this is pretty soft for wool, and it only developed a few holes. If you're using wool clothing a lot, you can develop a lot of holes. You can see like two, I don't even know if you can see right there. Um, just be careful when you're washing this stuff, but these things can last a long time if you take care of them. They keep you really warm and uh, yeah, they're I think a must have layer, some kind of base layer top. Um, leave that for last. Um, I did bring a fleece the entire trip, so I had it even in the even in the summer, I carried this fleece, and this is a Timmermaid um, Alpha Direct hoodie, and I I really wanted to love this thing, but I just never really used it other than hostels, um, and when it got super cold at the end. So the last few weeks, I would layer this thing underneath uh, underneath my main hiking shirt. Um, and I could really only do that if it was, uh, I don't know, in the 30s, like hiking in the 30s, that was probably the best use case for this. Um, other than that, it was just too hot. It did breathe pretty well. If you just wore this, like you can feel a lot of air coming through it. Um, but for me, I was fine in my other shirts. So I really didn't use this that much to hike in. I wanted to love it so much because it's such a cool like piece of gear and it weighs under five ounces for a fleece, which is great. Uh, but I just didn't use it that much. Um, but yeah, Timmermaid Alpha Direct, uh, Alpha Direct hoodie. And yeah, I'd say the best thing this, I got a lot of compliments on this um, at Hiker Hostel. So if you want like, just a piece of gear to get a lot of compliments. Uh, that would be this one. Um, for my puffy, I wore this Rab. That's the brand. The brand is Rab. Um, Rab Micro Light Alpine hoodie. And I think this was my favorite piece of clothing because it's instant warmth and it's hard not to love something that just gives you instant warmth. Um, I started the trail with an REI 650 down jacket and that would have not been warm enough for the end of the trail. Um, this thing kept me warm. I slept in it a few, uh, a few nights. Um, it's got a lot of features like this controls the hood so you can really like cinch, cinch the hood down over top of your head and get a tight fit. Um, it's got a pocket here which will keep your phone and your electronics warm, which you're gonna have to do in the cold weather. And it also has um, straps here where you can tighten up 
the waist to keep any drafts out. Um, so again, a really good puffy to sleep in. Um, the quality is great. Like I used this for the whole through hike. I washed it when I got home and it still looks good. So I'm gonna keep, keep using this. Um, and the color is great because I stood out <laughs> in the woods. Um, kind of a walking highlighter. But uh, if you, I didn't see anyone else with this jacket, the Rab, Rab Micro Light Alpine. I didn't see anyone else with it. I think because it weighs, it weighed like 17 ounces, which is more than most people want to carry. Um, but for me, it was totally worth the wait. I would 100% bring it again. Quality is amazing, and I'm going to keep um, using it and using it as my main uh, backpacking puffy. So those were all the clothes that I finished my hike with. All right, so this is gonna be the last segment of my gear, and it is my cooking setup, food storage, first aid kit, and hygiene, and electronics. So let's start with the food setup, which is drastically different. I started just cold soaking, and I used a Talenti jar, um, but I switched to this setup about halfway through, and I used a Tokes 750 milliliter titanium pot. Um, and this, this piece of gear was great. I, if anything, I would get something that has a little bit more volume. Um, and the reason I say that is sometimes you're gonna get really hungry and you're gonna to wanna to have two ramens and instant mashed potatoes and a uh, meat packet or something and this isn't gonna have enough volume. Um, it was just big enough in most cases. Um, but 750 milliliters is probably the smallest I would go if I had to do it again. Um, I made this pot koozie out of Reflectix, which weighs under an ounce and held up the entire time and I can still use it. Uh, this was great for keeping things warm because leaving titanium out, uh, it's not gonna retain that much heat in colder weather. So having this little Reflectix koozie kept drinks warm. Definitely I would make one of those. Um, I brought the lid too. Some people don't bring the lid because it weighs a lot more um, relative to the pot itself, but uh, yeah, I like that it fits on snug and keeps everything tight. So I brought it. Um, for my uh, stove, I brought this Soto Amicus stove and I didn't have any issues with this. And actually it was really efficient compared to the BRS um, ultralight stove, which weighs under an ounce. And I have that stove too. And I wouldn't bring it in colder weather um, and windier weather. Uh, yeah, that's, it's just not a very efficient stove. Uh, this stove was much more efficient and did better in the wind. No complaints. It's the Soto Amicus stove. Um, with that, uh, or I should go over the spoon. This is a Tokes long handled spoon. Definitely the most popular trail spoon. Um, I think it's the best one cause it has a polished bowl so you can see when it's dirty. Um, it doesn't have the spork tongs, which can cut through plastic and Ziploc bags, which you don't want. Um, yeah, and it's long handle. The only thing is that it gets lost really easily. It blends in with a lot of things. So I would spray paint this or just tie something off here so you don't lose it because I lost this spoon a lot, but wound up finding it, but it seemed to go missing more than any other item that I had. Um, Fuel, I just used this small fuel canister. These things would last around, um, around a week for me if I was boiling once or twice uh, in the morning and then again at night. Um, I brought a mini Bic uh, lighter and I just wrapped some gear tape. I used this thing for the entire trail and it still has some life left. Um, and then I just use this little scrunchy hair tie um, to put everything in the pot including this bandana, which I use to like clean up the pots um, and to wrap everything and tie it tight so it's not clinking around in my pack. Um, so that was the, the cook setup. That worked really well. I don't think I would really change much from that. Um, maybe a slightly bigger pot, but that's the only thing. Everything else was dialed in really well. Um, for my food bag, I used this OPSAC um, odor-proof bag and this was great at keeping all my smelly food 
um, kind of sealed and keep that smell out of the rest of my gear. So uh, the only thing is that these bags consistently fail right around here. So my tip to everyone here is to duct tape each side so that when you're pulling it, you don't rip the seam because eventually it's going to fail there and then your bag's useless. Um, or not useless, but a lot harder to use. So uh, yeah, these bags are great at keeping smell out, but they fail in the same spot. Uh, also get a, a bear bag that matches your odor proof bag. This one, my odor proof bag was way too long and my, uh, my bear bag was way too wide. So just make sure that, that they fit. So if I had to do it again, I'd get either one or the other that matches. Um, this was a DCF bag from Ultralight Sacks on Etsy. Uh, yeah, last of the whole trail, no rips or tears and definitely waterproof. Uh, so that was good. Um, for uh, my hygiene, um, I kind of had two bags. One was right on the outside of my pack and this was toilet paper and hand sanitizer and some ear swabs. Um, so I just had that on the outside of my pack and inside of my pack I had kind of the full med kit um, and my, uh, my toothbrush and toothpaste. And I use, I didn't obviously bring this one on trail with me, I threw that one out. Um, but I just wanted to show that I actually, I used like a regular toothbrush, not some crazy ultralight toothbrush. Um, get one that actually cleans your teeth well. Like you don't want to get cavities or something on trail that you have to get off and get dental surgery. Just get stuff that cleans your teeth well. It's, in my opinion, it's not worth the extra ounce or half ounce. Um, yeah, just get a toothbrush that cleans your teeth well. Uh, in my med kit, I'll go through some of the items. Some like uh, medical tape, like the gauze tape. Um, this is a gear tape, the one that I, the clear gear tape that I would use to patch my jacket. Uh, this is a nozzle that goes on um, your smart water bottle that you can use to back flush your filter. Um, iodine tablets for water purification. So you can see this is like not just my med kit, but kind of just miscellaneous stuff. Um, here's some gauze, uh, alcohol prep pads. Um, I had some Neosporin in here. Yeah, so I had some like Neosporin in here. I had a lot of Band-Aids, which I did use. Um, antiseptic towels. Uh, I would use these flossers a good amount on trail. Um, sterile gauze pads. These are really, like this along with the gauze that you can wrap around is a great way to dress wounds or cuts. Um, these are the filters I was, or the O-rings I was talking about in the Sawyer. So those are the extra ones you want to bring in case the O-ring fails. And of course a uh, Thermarest um, like repair kit in case your mattress pops or you develop like a big hole, you can patch it with that. Um, so those are basic things in the med kit. Um, for electronics, I got a bunch of stuff here. The uh, main thing were these power bricks. Um, these are Nightcore 10,000 um, power bricks, and I brought two of them. Uh, they do make one that is 20,000, but I liked having the flexibility of having two, so I could put one on my back and one in my fanny pack. Um, yeah, so I just brought two. Uh, this was plenty of power for vlogging every day and editing videos at night and playing like games on my phone at night. <laughs> and listening to podcasts during the day. So um, I don't think you really need much more power than this um, unless you're vlogging and doing even a bigger setup than I did. So two 10,000 power bricks uh, is what I used. Um, for a charge hub, this thing took forever to find out. I don't know why it's this hard, um, but I needed a power brick that could charge USB-C because my phone is USB-C charging, but also had a USB port. And then once you start researching this stuff, you'll find out that if you're charging all three at the same time, sometimes they distribute power differently. And 
for example, if you have all three plugged in, they might give 80% power to the top and 10% and 10%. So I wanted one that charged evenly, so when I charge three devices, they all charge quick. Um, and this one did that, and it took forever to find. Uh, everyone has different devices, so I guess my tip would be to buy this last so that you um, can match it to your devices, like match it to whatever your phone charges, match it to your headlamp, match it to your power bricks, and buy this one last. And try and buy one that uh, distributes power when you're charging all three things at the same time, because that's often what you're doing. Uh, for my cords, I brought two of these USB-C to USB-C cords. Um, if I had to do it again, I would get one cord that was like a foot long and maybe bring one of these longer ones because these were entirely too long. And trying to charge in my fanny pack with one of these, like, <laughs> I think these are like four foot, um, was way too cumbersome and I shouldn't have brought it. Um, my headlamp was this Nightcore headlamp. This is probably the most popular headlamp on trail now. Uh, it is a char rechargeable headlamp. I never had to recharge this in between towns. It lasted that long. And if you watch any of my videos, you'll know I night hiked all the time. Um, also, it has this red feature, which is great for in camp when you don't want to blast people's like eyes with white light. Uh, if you're not going to get this headlamp, headlamp, definitely get one with a red um, light so you are courteous to people in camp. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the main stuff I was hiking with. Uh, this is a, um, a SSD hard drive, and I brought this mainly for vlogging. Um, I'm gonna do a whole video just on vlogging and have my process for that, but I wanted to show this because I know a lot of people like to document their trip. Um, I opted for this because it's a two terabyte hard drive so I can save all my video footage on here. Um, they make those mini SD cards, but I was so scared of losing them. I wanted something a little bit bigger, a little bit heftier, and this SSD, this is a Samsung T7 SSD, two terabyte hard drive with a USB-C um, outlet, which was great because I could just use the same cords. Um, yeah, really fast transfer and I could constantly back up all the stuff that's on my phone or clear out space on my phone um, and put things on this hard drive. Uh, so yeah, this was an amazing piece of gear and it took me a long time to figure it out and I think this is the way to go for file storage, at least for me for vlogging when I had a lot of, I had to manage storage all the time, this was great. Um, two things that I'm using right now are my phone and my tripod. Uh, I'm using the Pedco UltraPod 3, um, which is a little bit bigger than the UltraPod 1. That The UltraPod 1 is the one I would recommend. I think it has a better clip to your phone and it's smaller and a lower profile and it weighs less. The UltraPod 3 is readily available and it's on Amazon and stuff, um, but it's bulkier and harder to clip your phone on. Um, so yeah, if I had to do it again, Petco UltraPod 1 would be the one that I would get. Uh, my phone is a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, and it was could have been my best piece of gear. I used it constantly for navigation, for taking video, photo, video editing, um, calling people. I mean, you, you're gonna use your phone all the time. Um, entertainment, podcasts, videos. Um, this phone was great, battery life was great. I and it was tough too. I dropped it. I shattered the front uh, glass um, in Maine, and then I dropped it in a river in New Hampshire, um, and everything was fine. So, uh, great phone. Um, I think that was it for electronics. The, the only other thing was the um, uh, my earbuds, and I used just wired um, headphones. Uh, I did see a lot of people out with Bluetooth headphones and those are great. Um, just know you're gonna maybe have to recharge them um, on trail. So just budget your power banks for that. Uh, but I just used the wired ones uh, and they were, they were just fine for me. So that's it. That is every single thing. Just double checking. Um, oh, the only, only other thing was the and this is the very last one, the liner in my pack. 
which was just a compactor bag. I just used like a regular compactor bag. And I used two, I used two of them the entire way from Harper's Ferry to Springer and they, and they worked. So um, just regular compactor bag to line the inside of my pack. And that way I didn't really have to keep anything in mini bags or mini storage bags. I would just stuff every single thing that needed to stay dry in that compactor bag. Um, okay, I think that's, that's actually it now. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Happy to go over any of this stuff. Um, and again, check out the lighter pack with a list of every single thing in there with weights and links. So thank you for watching and take care.